Hey, 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 this is Brianka and welcome to Life with Brianka. Um, first of all, ignore this wet spot and you probably didn't see it until I brought attention to it or maybe you did see it, okay? I got some on my shirt and um, I didn't feel like taking the shirt off so I just spot cleaned it with water and I was like, I don't have time to wet, let it dry. I don't feel like getting the hair dry and putting it on here so we just gonna record this video with a wet stain, okay? But anyways, hey, welcome to Life with Brianka. I am so glad you're here. If this is your first time here, welcome. I do not think it's by accident that you are here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is not your first time here, welcome back to these neck of the woods. I'm so glad you're here. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And um, I'm Brianka. <laughs> I'm an inner healing life coach among many, many, many other things. And um, here on Life with Brianka, I give words of encouragement, release prophetic words, and share my testimony as God leads. I've also engulfed a new vein onto this channel, which is called a teacher who, a teacher that never wanted to teach. So be sure to check that out as well. Um, I have a pet with me. I am dog sitting and she is currently moving around. Um, so if you hear any noise and all that, um, that's my girl over here. She's, yep, she's handling her business. She's doing it. And she just turned her back to me. Wow. All righty, let's get it started. I am excited. Listen, we are back again. And I did part one of the submission thing. I did part two of submission thing, even though it's not labeled as part one, part two. Part one was, um, I think it's just it's entitled submission. Oh, marrying the plans of God, right? Part two is talking about um, you first have to submit, then after submission comes joy. And here we are, um, part three. And on part three, we're talking about cleaving, okay? We're talking about cleaving. So just like I normally like to do, I like to give a backstory of how I got here with the message. So let's do that. Um, <clears throat> Let's see where do I want to go. So on my YouTube channel, sorry, I was like, where is it? Where is it? Okay, so on my YouTube channel, last year, I think at the maybe at the top of 2023, I started this new thing of I started this new thing of what did I call it? A year with God. And if you go back and watch the video, I'll actually um included in the description box but it's a video talking about a year with god and how in my phone i um go month by month and i make sure to like if god said something to me or i continue to see something or i feel like or uh god has nudged me something in the spirit like i'll make notes and um I did it again this year in 2024. It worked so well for 2023 and I enjoyed being able to look back on like, oh, this is what God said in February and look, it happened in June or you know what I mean? So that was nice to have. And so I enjoyed that process so much that even though I did not post a video, I continued to do it for 2024. So this started, how we are here started like that. So, um, this happened on Saturday, March 16th at 10.20 a.m. And I wrote in my little A Year With God, it says, a word that God has been laying in front of me a lot lately is cleave. And cleave is like not a normal word whatsoever, right? Um, not necessarily in the marriage way, although I haven't studied that much yet. It's talking about like in that area, but more so in blessings, blessings cleaving to us when we obey him, like found in Deuteronomy 28 and 30, like financial blessings cleaving to us. Cleave also means to overtake. So that's really how it started. God just continued to um, bring this word before me. What happened was I studied Deuteronomy 28 um, and the word cleave stood out to me in that text. And I'll read that in just a moment. So I read that one day and then a few minutes later, um, or maybe the next day, I get on YouTube and I see this video and this girl posts a video and it's called, um, it's cleaving time or something like that. And I didn't even watch the whole video, but just the title. 
got me. I'm like, oh, wow, like I'm seeing Cleve again. And then like two days later from that, um, and then I did, I don't want you to think it's the alg algorithm, okay? Because I saw that video, it's cleaving time, but I didn't click on it right then until like, um, oh, several more days later, all right? So it was not the algorithm, it was the Holy Spirit rigamen thing, okay? Um, so after I saw that video, uh, the title where it says it's cleaving time, I didn't click on the video at that time. And then a few days later, I see this another video, and it's titled Leave and Cleave, right? And I'm like, Lord, you show speak and cleave. Like, what's going on? And um, but again, like just as I wrote in my come uh in my a year with God notes, it wasn't immediately about financial blessings. I mean, sorry, it wasn't immediately about marriage. It was more so about like the blessings of God cleaving to us when, as we obey him. But as I continue to see it, God spoke to me in my quiet time. And I have that um, on there in my A Year With God as well. And God spoke to me in my quiet time. And he was like, yeah, I'm talking to you about cleaving, like blessings cleaving to you, like Deuteronomy 28. But this is also like a cleaving in a marriage way as well. And so what God began to express to me, this is why this is part three, is that he told me that when it comes to cleave, he says, I'm getting you ready spiritually for what you're going to um, partake in naturally. That just as you have to be patient with me, that was the first step actually. So just as you have to be patient with me, then you have to submit to me. Then comes you cleaving to me. Just as you have to do that to me, your spiritual husband, right? You're going to have to do that to your natural husband. Be, husband. Be patient with him. Um, submit to him. And then cleave to him, right? And so here we are. I am super excited because I don't have too many notes. I'm just going to um, kind of remember what God shared with me in my quiet time. I didn't write too much down um, that I can share rather. And we're just gonna flow, amen. So let's talk about how submission connects to cleaving, amen. All righty, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And I'll be skipping over because Deuteronomy 28 is very long. But this is the scripture that talks about if you obey God, blessings will come. And then once you get to verse 15, it talks about if you don't obey God, then curses are going to come. Very familiar scripture. Once I start reading it, I'm sure you'll be familiar like, oh, I know where this is at, right? Or I've heard this before. So it says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. All right, if thou shalt hearken diligently. And that word, when I was reading the, the scripture, this word hearken and diligently kept going to me. And so this word hearken doesn't just mean to listen, but hearken means to listen and obey. So God is saying, if you um, receive these commandments and you hearken unto them, if you listen and obey, right? The Bible talks about what good is a person that just listens to the word and doesn't do the word. Right. And so we have to hearken to the word of God. Right. And not just hearken to it, but we have to do it diligently, like continuously seek after God. Um, and so. Which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Right. God says, if you hearken unto my commandments and obey them diligently, I will set you high above the nations. Verse two, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So this word overtake thee in the Hebrew, it is. Strong's age, 5381. Nasag. 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 So Nasag means to reach, to overtake, to take hold upon, to attain, to secure, to get, to attain um to bring okay so god is saying this is how i study so i'm gonna break it down for you how i study god is saying if we obey him the blessings of the lord will literally 
overtake us, right? If God says, if you take heed and hearken and listen diligently and listen and obey my word, I'm going to allow the blessings of me, says the spirit of the Lord, to overtake you. It's going to reach out to you. It's going to attain you. It's going to obtain you. Come on. It's going to take a hold to you, right? If you obey the Lord, God's, God's saying like, you won't be able to run for the blessings because they're going to be running after you. If you obey me, my blessing says the spirit of the Lord is going to run after you. It's going to chase after you. It is going to overtake you. Okay. Again, here's the part where it goes. Uh, verse three, which you're probably familiar with. It says, blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thy be in the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, kin and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store, right? Blessed shall thou be when thy coming and blessed shall thou be when thy goeth. This one I, I really like, verse seven. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee seven ways. So God is saying, if you obey me, if you hearken unto me, hallelujah, if you if you just listen to me and obey me diligently, God says, not only am I going to allow you to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, blessed in your coming and blessed in your going, but I'm going to even allow those enemies that have sent, set themselves against you, that have made themselves an enemy against you. God said, I'm going to allow you to see me smite them in your face. Like you will see your enemies fall, right? Uh, you will see your enemies fall and they were going to fall in your face. Not only that, the Lord says that those enemies that they came to you in one way, God says, I am going to smite them and scatter them so much that they're going to leave in seven different ways, right? If you obey me, if you obey me. And this just makes me think about the scripture that talks about the fact that it says they come one way, but they leave seven ways. And then knowing that the scripture talks about, and I don't know exactly where it's at, but it says after a man cleans up his house, meaning talking about his spirit and the demon leaves, but then the demon comes back and comes seven times with seven more demons, uh, more powerful, right? But if you obey God and listen to his structure, you ain't got to worry about them demons. They're actually going to be running from you seven different ways instead of coming to you seven more powerful, right? But anyways, amen. Um, and then it goes on and talks about this, right? Talk about the blessings that if you obey God or if you hearken unto his voice diligently, you'll be blessed in all these different ways. Another verse that I really like is verse 12. And it says, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of your hand. God says, if you obey me, my son and my daughter, if you do what I have commanded you to do, if you not just listen, but you obey, come on, what you know I have been speaking to your heart to live a life that is holy, to live a life that is pure, to no longer lust and thirst for things of the world, but to hunger and thirst after my righteousness. God says, I will allow the works of your hand to be blessed and I am going to open unto you a good treasure. Amen. All right, so let me keep going. So it keeps going, right? But then it talks about the consequences of disobedience. And it starts off in verse 15 and it says, but it shall come to pass, meaning this is another promise. So just like he started off with the good things, he literally started, God literally started verse one and said, it shall come to pass. This is a promise. If thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of God, I will set thee high above all the nations. So God's saying, I can promise you sons and daughters that if you obey me, that I will set you high above the nations. I can promise you son and daughter, if you um, obey me, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I can um, promise you that you will see your enemies scattered right before you if you obey me. And just the same, God says, but it shall come to pass. In other words, I can also promise this, that if thou will not hearken, meaning if you will not listen and obey unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I've commanded this day, that all these curses shall be upon thee 
and overtake thee. So meaning the very thing that God said that if you obey me, you're going to get blessed. Like I'm going to allow these blessings to overtake you. Remember overtake is to obtain, to attain, to um, secure, to put, to grab, to bring, right? That is what overtake means. And so if you don't, if we don't obey God, if we don't hearken unto his voice, if we don't listen and obey, then as a result, curses are going to overtake us. Curses are going to obtain us. Curses are going to be able to successfully secure us. Curses are going to be able to attain us. And I don't know about you, but in my life, when I was disobeying God, I definitely saw that curses were obtaining me. I definitely saw that curses were attaining me. I definitely saw that curses were securing me, right? So it says, curses shall, verse 16, 16 curses shall be in the city and curses shall be in the field curse shall be thy basket and thy store curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep curse shall thou be when thou comest in and curse shall thou be when thou goest out literally the the opposite of what you could get is what is going to happen to you if we disobey god if we sit, step outside of his will, if we ignore the clarion call that he's been placing on our heart and our soul and our spirit to do what he's called us to do, if we continue to ignore the purpose that God has called us to do, if we continue to ignore, um, and when I say purpose in this way, I'm not necessarily, even though it does include like your purpose in life, whatever God has called you to, but like your purpose in to live holy, like that's your purpose to live holy, your purpose into bearing the fruit of the spirit, your purpose in having good character. That is your purpose, your purpose in being an example to showing the world how Christ wants us to live. That's your purpose, right? Your purpose to evangelize, your purpose to prophesy, your purpose to decree a thing and declare a thing in the spirit of the realm as God sees fit. That's your purpose. And so if you ignore that, if you disobey that, if you run from that, like Jonah ran from it, come on, if like Jonah ran from his purpose and Jonah ran from his call, then guess what? Curses are going to come upon us. If we continue to run from the things that God has told us to do and called us to do, curses are going to come to us. And it's a promise, right? We always talk about the promises of God and there, trust me, there are some amazing, great promises that God has for us. But there's also promises like the Lord's like, I can guarantee you this going to happen if you disobey me. Like it's just guaranteed, right? Um, but there's one thing I wanted to get to because we can get to the cleave, okay? Verse 21, this is still talking about the curses. And it says, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess. The Lord says, if you disobey me, I'm going to allow the pestilence to cleave unto you. Uh, um, the Hebrew meaning of pestilence is plague. Right. And so it's not just a natural plague, but a spiritual plague. God says, if you disobey me, I'm going to allow a spiritual plague to cleave y'all to cleave to you, a spiritual plague to cleave to you. And so this word cleave in Hebrew is Strong's age, 1692. Davak. Davak. Divac and divac. Um, oh, sorry. Just below that. Divac. Divac. Alrighty. So divac um, means cleave, means to cling, to stick, to stay close, to keep close, uh, to follow closely, to join to, to overtake, to catch, to pursue closely. So the Lord says, if you, my people, do not obey me, I'm going to allow a spiritual plague to join to you. Join to you. The Bible calls join to marriage, right? So God says, y'all, God says, if we disobey him, expect a spiritual plague pestilence to marry themselves to us and they have legal right to do so. Why? Because we disobeyed God. 
when we disobey God, when you don't do what you're called to do, when you don't walk in your purpose, when you when you live a lifestyle that is unholy and you know God is calling you to holiness, you literally, it's almost like, I wish I had keys next to me, but that's what I see. Like you're literally giving the enemy's keys. Like here, take, take my life. I give you access to destroy my marriage. I give you access to destroy my future. I give you access to destroy my career. When we disobey God, we're giving the enemy access to destroy and wreak havoc in our finances, spiritually, um, mentally, in our body, physically. We give the enemy access. And how the enemy works, baby, when he come in, the enemy comes in and he comes in to destroy not just you, but your whole bloodline. Like he's coming to destroy not just you, but like the the people that you're going to birth in the earth, right? Your legacy. He's coming to destroy your legacy. Okay. So God is saying, if you disobey me, you can be, it's guaranteed that pestilence and plagues are going to cleave to you. It's going to stick to you. This is what got me. Remember cleave means to per pursue closely. So these spiritual pestilence, these spiritual plagues, if we disobey God is going to pursue us closely. It's going to chase after us, right? It's going to stay close to us. And we wonder why, like, dang, I could never get it right. Like, it just feels like, you know, I've always fallen. And it's not a thing of you obeying God, but you're constantly disobeying God. And you're wondering why is things not working out for me? Because there are spiritually pest, spiritual pestilence pursuing you and they're, they have every right to you. And I just see this so clearly spiritually. Like I'm having so many visions pop in my head. Let me share, share them. One vision I see like wasp and um, locust literally coming to chase somebody that is disobeying God. And I also see somebody running and trying to dodge, right? The pestilence, but you can't dodge them because they're staying close. They're keeping close. That's just how the enemy is. When we disobey God, the enemy Come on, he he he's staying close. He's watching to and pursuing you. The Bible says that the enemy um, roams like a roaring lion, seeking whom seeking whom he may devour. If he's seeking whom he may devour, that means he's watching you closely. That means he's pursuing us, right? He, he's seeking, he's chasing us and trying to see when will this person disobey God so that I can have access to come in? When will this person step outside of the will of God so that I have access to come in? Or when will this person keep delaying what they know that God has told them to do? When will they, how long will they keep delaying? Because as long as they keep delaying, which is a disobedience, as long as they keep delaying, I can pursue them. I have a right to chase them. I have a right to overtake them. I have a right to cleave them. I have a right to join to them. I have a right to marry them. Remember join to the Bible used marriage and join to meaning the same thing. Like it means marriage, right? And cleave means marriage. And that is another word for covenant. So the Holy Spirit in this moment is saying that when we open ourselves up to the enemy and we disobey God, we give the enemy access, not just keys, but we give him a ring. Like we give the enemy the ability to join to us, to marry us, to cleave to us. When we delay in obeying God, which is outright disobedience, we give the enemy, we're basically telling the enemy, I'll marry you, Satan. I'll, I'll, I'll cleave to you and you can join to me. Like what? That's crazy. That's insane okay like let's not do that okay so that's where i was that's how i started with the whole cleave thing i'm like I, just as hard as i'm teaching like that's just as hard as i was praying like lord i don't want the pestilence to cleave to me help me be obedient to you god i want to hearken unto your voice i want to listen to you and obey you diligently come on that you open up the good treasures unto me in the name of jesus so that you can bless the works of my hands so that i could be blessed in the city and blessed in the field so i could be blessed in my coming and blessed in my going so the fruit of my womb shall be blessed and my produce and my business and my business and endeavors and me in this career i shall be blessed i want to obey you lord okay so then as i was you know praying that prayer and just going before god and just going all in one of the then the lord shift and he was like and now i want you to know that this cleaving yes i was talking financially to you yes i was talking about the blessings of the lord the good treasures opening up to you cleaving to you he said but now i want to talk to you about marriage right now i want you to open up your ears 
to hear cleaving from a marriage standpoint. And so I then had to study that, right? And so I went to Genesis 20, um, Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis 2, 24. And I'm going to read um, from uh, starting midway verse 20 all the way to 24 because it's so good. All righty. Um, it says, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of his one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Verse 22. Come on. Genesis 2, 22. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. And he brought her to the man, the man, verse 23, the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she shall take out of man. Verse 24. I'm gonna read it all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it all. Okay. Verse 24 says that is why a man leaves his father and mother. Hold on. Let me go to, I need King James because I need it. I need y'all to hear cleave. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And verse 25, and they were both naked. The man and his wife were not ashamed. Ready? So there's this, um, you know, slogan that the church has for those that are married or desire to be married that leave and cleave, right? Leave and cleave, which comes from Genesis 20, 20, 20 sorry, Genesis 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. So again, this word cleave, meaning to join to, meaning to marry, meaning to um, overtake, meaning to, uh, I'm trying to get back to it, to keep close, to pursue, to follow closely, to catch, right? It's not just following, it's not just following closely and to pursue, but like cleave means to catch, right? To catch. Amen. Um, so I'm going to read, and I've shared this story before, but I won't go into um, full detail. Genesis 24, it talks about Isaac and Rebecca. And like I said, I've taught this before, um, but I want to teach it from a way of, of a standpoint of submission and cleave. So, um, and it's so good. I literally just want to read this whole thing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But let me find out where I want to start at, y'all. All right, y'all. Um, I'm still trying to find. I think I found it. There's just so many good verses in Genesis 24. So if you have time, I strongly encourage you to go and read Genesis 24. It is such a great story. Um, and there's just so many good parts. I just don't know where to pick. But I'm going to start here uh, at verse uh, 14. So just giving a little background story. This is, um, about Abraham and he sends his servant to go find his son, Isaac, a wife. And Abraham's like, Hey, I need you to go to where my people are. Like, I don't want my son to marry a Canaanite. I want him to marry somebody basically that's in the kingdom of God and, or how God explained it to me, someone in the kingdom of God. Like I want I want, God was saying, I want my sons, my righteous sons, right? Those that know my hand is upon them and I've called them. I want them. They can't marry like just anybody. They can't marry a Canaanite um, because the Canaanite was, Canaanites were going to make whoever they marry worship these false gods. And the Lord's like, no, my sons have to have to marry um in my kingdom they have to marry a kingdom woman right they have to marry a, a kingdom woman because the kingdom woman instead of sending them back like the canaanites the kingdom woman is going to elevate isaac the kingdom woman is going to um expand isaac's thought process right the kingdom woman is going to bring so much favor to isaac and i'm saying isaac but isaac is ambiguous right here like it it's any, any, any man, right? Any kingdom man of God, right? Amen. So verse 11, did I explain it all? Okay, sorry. So, I, um, yeah, Abraham sent 
the servant to find a wife for Isaac and wanted a kingdom. Yeah, okay. And then I no, the servant made up in his mind, like, okay, if I see a woman doing blase blase, which was if she asked for me as if I ask her for water and she gives me some, and without even asking, she feeds, gives water to all my 10 camels, then that's how I know that's the one that's for Isaac. Right. That was his little test of how he was going to test God to, you know, see if he can pick the right wife for Isaac. And it worked. So here we are in verse 12. Um, yeah, let me go to verse 12. Then he prayed, talking about the servant that's on this mission to find a wife for Isaac. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master, Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master, Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. So the servant was like, Lord, please like make this mission successful because I can't come back empty handed, like without a woman. Like I need to come back with a wife for Isaac because my master Abraham is going to be looking at me crazy if I don't have a woman with me for his son. And so the servant was like, and look at me, God, I'm standing in a, um, prominent place. I'm standing in a place where all of the women, all of the virgins, all of the daughters of these town people are going to come out and see me. Like I'm standing in a place where I can see them and they can see me. Like, look at me, Lord, please make this mission successful. And, um, so yeah, he prays that prayer and it says verse 15, before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jaw on her shoulder. So like, this is how God will answer. And, and at times, like just as the prayer was before, the Bible says before he had finished praying, like the prayers were still on his lips. Come on, so now, come on somebody. But like those, the, the prayers were still on his heart and God had was sending the answer as he's still praying for the answer. God was sending the answer and Rebecca was the answer. Um, and it says, the woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The verse 17, the servant hurried to meet her and said, please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and give, gave her a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too until they have enough to drink. So even in this like test that the servant was doing it was very wise to do because he was testing also to see like the person that i pick like i want this person to be thoughtful right i want this person to be considerate i want this person to be a gentle spirit and rebecca presented that in that moment right and maybe who knows maybe rebecca was having a good day maybe rebecca was like you know what I don't mind taking an extra trip for your 10 camels and yeah they like they can drink as much as they want like amen so she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to well, draw more water and drew enough for all the camels. Without saying the word, the man, verse 21, let's hit here. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. And I didn't expect the land here like this, but I feel it right here. Whether you know it or not, some people, come on, your Isaac is watching you and not saying a word until God releases him to say, because come on, Isaac, you don't have to speak, right? But without saying a word, God or Isaac or the servant rather is watching, but he's taking it all in. I just feel like the servant was getting a download from the Lord, like that's the one that's the one that's the one for this for for Isaac, like that's the one I've selected. And he was watching closely. And it was so important for Rebecca's character to remain intact. It was so important for Rebecca to be that gentle, kind spirit. It was so important for Rebecca to bear the fruit of the spirit. And didn't even know she was being wa watch watching. Didn't even know that she was being watched. Sorry. And she was being watched because the servant was trying to see is my assignment like is this the one has my journey in finding a wife for isaac has it been made successful right so um when the camels finished drinking the man took a gold ring nose ring and two gold bracelets and gave it to her and said 
um, whose daughter are you? Who, who's your father, right? My father is the king of kings and lord of lords, sir. Um, she didn't say that, but that's what I'm saying. Sorry, I'm being silly. Okay, let me keep going. And then the servant asked to spend the night with the family and uh, the woman, Rebecca, being generous again. She said, of course, we got room for you. We got room for all you people. Come on in, right? And let me skip skip down. Like I said, y'all, this is really good. Go back and allow God to um, reveal more to you. But let me skip down. Okay, so this is, so I'm skipping around, like I said. But what happened um, the servant spent the night at Rebecca's family's house and, you know, shared with the family, like who he was and his mission to find a wife for his servant, um, for his master's son, Isaac. And he, the servant was saying, you know, I found Rebecca. She is very pleasing. I think she's the perfect one. I want to take her to be a wife for, you know, Isaac. And the family's like, okay, you know, that sounds good, but um just can you like they woke up the next morning the servant's like okay i gotta be on my way i gotta gotta take your daughter like she's gonna be a wife and the family was like hey whoa, whoa, whoa. like we're not ready we're not ready for her to go yet like can we, we want her to stay another night and the servant's like man come on like y'all be so for real i need to get back and take this woman to my 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 master so he know i made success on this mission and you trying to delay me and there shall be no more delay like send me on my way so i can tell my master that the mission is completed come on now that the mission is successful right amen don't delay what you know is true like why are you delaying what you already know the the servant is like why why are we here why are we still here why are we delay, delaying what God has clearly said? This is the one. Why are we hesitating? Why are we, why are we um, delaying? I ain't got no other word for delay. Why are we delaying this thing? Like, let me go. And so um, then it says, verse 54, when they got up the next morning, so this is another morning. When they got up the next morning, he said, the servant said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother Laban and her mother replied, oh, let the young woman remain with us 10 days. So then you may go 10 more days. They wanted to delay it 10 more days, right? And I know 10 biblically means testimony and so, or test, right? And so this this delay of 10 days this was a test right and it wasn't necessarily a test for laban but it was a test for rebecca Look, i'm gonna go back come back to those 10 days right um but he said to them do not detain me now that the lord has granted success to my journey the servant says don't delay me now that you know my now that i know this is a successful journey send me on my way so i can go to my master verse 57 then they said well let's call the young woman and ask her about it so they call rebecca and ask her will you go with this man rebecca said i will go listen rebecca said I will go. So this, again, this was a test for Rebecca to see if she will submit. Rebecca, in that moment, the Bible says, Genesis 2, 24, it says that we need to leave our family and cleave to our spouse. Rebecca, but before you have, before you get to cleaving, you first have to be able to submit. Don't think that you're going to be able to sub, uh, cleave to God and join to God and be married to God without first submitting to God. Come on, somebody. Don't think in a natural marriage that you're going to be able to cleave to your spouse without being able to submit to your spouse. And the reason I'm saying submit for spouses, because I know the Bible talks about that women, wives submit unto your husbands. But husbands are submitting them to God, right? There, there's a submitting as well. And even though the submission looks differently for the husband, the husband is also in a form submitting to the wife, right? But not the same way, not the same way. So I don't want you all to think that I'm going against the word of God. I'm just saying that the submission looks differently because there are going to be points in time where God says, husband, well, God is saying, husband, submit to me. But, and God gives the husband a message, like, listen to your wife. That is submitting to God and the wife as well. Amen. Okay. So Rebecca had to submit. And the, so the fact that her family said, 
hey, we want her to be here for 10 more days. This was a testing period for Rebecca, like to see, are you gonna go with your family? And are you gonna are you gonna go with your family and stay with your family and and, and bend to this testing of 10 days, right? Are you gonna delay your marriage? Are you gonna delay your breakthrough? Are you gonna delay your favor? Are you gonna delay your elevation? Come on, are you gonna delay the, the overflow of God for your family when you know that God's mission has been successful? When you know that the journey that God has purposed you on has been made successful? Are you gonna delay it for 10 more days just to be with your family? Or Rebecca, are you gonna submit to the will of God? And just like the servant knows that the mission is successful, you too, Rebecca, know that the journey has been made successful and you submit to the plan of God and say, I cannot delay myself anymore. I've been delayed long enough. Come on, somebody. I see that God has made this journey successful. I see that God has made me abundant. I see that God has made an increase here. I see that there is blessings overflow. I will not delay the union of God just because I want to still cleave to my family when I should be leaving my family and cleaving to my spouse. Okay. So Rebecca passed the test here. She immediately submitted. They asked her a question. The family now, this is her family, which represents familiar things. Familiar things came to Rebecca and said, are you going to go with this man? Like, it's even the way they said it. Like, are you going to go with this man? Like, you don't know this man. Are you going to go with this man? But you have to have the wisdom of the Lord in you. You have to have the gift of discerning of spirits to know that this is not just any man. This is a vessel of the living God. And yes, I'm going to go with this man because I discern in my spirit that this man is leading me to my promise. Hallelujah. And as I was studying this, God also broke it down that Jesus represent the servant like Abraham or God represent Abraham, the master, and Jesus represented the servant and Rebecca representing the bride of Christ. And so God sent Jesus on earth to go find a wife. Come on. That is without spot or wrinkle. I feel the Holy Ghost. Well, come on now. That's without spot or wrinkle. God said, I'm sending my only begotten son who I am well pleased with. I'm sending him down to do a mission for me. I'm sending him to find my, to find a wife that is suitable for him. Y'all, I feel so excited. Oh my gosh. And then the scripture is popping up and I, I know I won't be able to go right to it, but it's the parable where, um, it's talking about the, the wedding and the master is saying, um, my, my son is getting married. It's a parable, but it's a parable about God and Jesus. This is what it makes me think about. Anyways, right? Jesus in this moment, let's do this analogy. Jesus is the servant and he's the one going out to find a wife that is perfect and is pleasing. And so Jesus is asking, Come on, will you come with me? My mission has been successful. I have, and that's what he's gonna say at the end of it. Come on, when he comes back, when, when Jesus comes back, he's gonna look for a church and say, my mission has been successful. I can't delay anymore. I can't be detained in heaven anymore. I gotta come get my bride, the church, because my journey has been made successful. When I came to the earth and I died on the cross and rose on the third day and I told my disciples and my people to go out and spread the to spread the gospel and go therefore to the nations that I'm coming back for a church that is righteous and my mission has now been made successful I can't be detained anymore I can't be delayed anymore come on my journey has been successful and come on and now Jesus is is asking us will you go with me bride of Christ Will you submit to me? And we, just like Rebecca, need to say, yes, I'll submit, Lord. Not just, come on, this is not just a, a natural cleaving of marriage, but this is a spiritual matter as well, right? That we see the Bible from a natural standpoint and a spiritual standpoint that God will speak to us in du duality as we're reading his scripture, as we're reading his holy word. Amen. So we shall submit, but in, I know I'm gonna keep reading, but I'm getting excited. Remember that submission comes first, right? Submission, patience, submission, and cleaving. 
Rebecca showed that she had a spirit of gentleness and patience when she decided, Lord, you are so good. When she decided to give water to um, the servant, when she decided not only to give water to the servant, but to give water to the 10 camels, right? The testimony, right? A Man, not only that, she showed the patience, then came the submission where she exemplified that. She showed submission when she was asked by her family, by those familiar things, by those familiar places, by those familiar friends, right? She was asked, are you going to go with this man? Like, are you going to do what the Lord tells you to do? Are, are you going to, um, you know, live your life holy and righteous like the Lord is asking you? Are you going to go to the next level? Are you going to believe everything that God said about you? And we have to respond like Rebecca. Yes, I will. And yes, I will go. And yes, I will do whatever God tells me to do. I'll do it. Whatever he says, me, tells me to say, I'll say it because I'm going to submit. Right. Rebecca had to be patient, show patience first submission and then comes the cleaving right don't expect to cleave without submission first all righty and remember just as i did in the last uh part two that there is joy like after we submit there's joy that comes okay there's a there's a joy set before us um so rebecca goes on and let me go to the part it says, what I want to read it. Verse 62. Now, Isaac had come from Ber Laharoi, for he was living in the Negev, which is a dry land. Negev is a dry land. He went out to the field one evening to meditate. And as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. I'm going to um, read KJV. It says, and Isaac, verse 62. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Laharoi, for he dealt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw. And behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother, Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Alrighty, so I want to uh, go back to this por portion. And here we see the cleaving. Here we see the cleaving. It says, um, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide. Sorry, man of prayer, man of quietness, meant a man of gentleness as well. And it, the Bible says, and he lifted his eyes, right? That, that term lifted his eyes means to... accept, to carry, to obtain, to respect, to regard. Is that right? Lift, to be lifted, to be exalted. Okay, that's, I think that's the proper one. To cause one to bear, to cause to bring, right? He saw, he saw, he lifted his eyes and saw and behold, the camels were coming, the 10 camels, right? Now they're representing, these 10 camels representing testimony, like the, the testimony of the mission, right? And it also talks about how the servant told Isaac everything that happened. The servant began to testify of what the Lord had done. And so Isaac, he lifted up his eyes and saw that the camels were coming. Isaac lifted up his eyes and he saw that the testimony was here, that the journey was successful. Isaac, lift, whether he realized it or not, he was lifting up his eyes and what he saw was the confirmation that the Lord had performed the very thing that he had promised. 
Isaac lifted up his eyes and whether he knew it or not, he saw that God had finished a complete work. Isaac had lifted up his eyes and whether he knew it or not, he saw that God had fulfilled that which he said he would complete. Come on. It's a finished work. It was a finished work. Whether he had the full um, knowledge of it, whether he was able to fully comprehend it spiritually, his, his blessing was coming to him spiritually. His favor had made his way, made, made its way to him, right? Whether he realized it or not. Hallelujah. Amen. And, oh, excuse me, way up. And then it says, and Rebecca lifted up her eyes and went, okay, here we go. That lifted up your eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I was like, there's a revelation there. Okay. That lifting up the eyes is an awakening, right? It's it's coming into full realization of what you're seeing. It's coming into full realization of what you're beholding. Come on. And so here you have Isaac lifting up his eyes, being awakened. And you have Rebecca, the promise, also lifting up her eyes and being awakened. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the blessings over your life, that you are going to lift up your eyes and your blessings are going to lift up their eyes and your blessings are going to recognize you that no longer will you and your blessing be blindfolded. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that just like Isaac and Rebecca lifted up their eyes and saw each other, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you and your blessings are lifting up their eyes and you're seeing each other. Now I take it to the marriage. I decree and declare that you and your spouse are lifting up your eyes and you're recognizing each other. That no longer it's it's a ponder of, is this the one? That you know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord has made this one the one. That the Lord has said, this is the journey that is successful. That the Lord has said, this is the one that I've picked for you. This is the kingdom man I've chosen for you. This is the kingdom woman I've chosen for you. Come on, your eyes are being lifted up and you're seeing Isaac lifted up his eyes and he saw the testimony. He saw the promise. Rebecca lifted up her eyes and it says, and when she saw Isaac, come on, her promise, her protection, come on, Isaac representing her, his, her protection. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Isaac name means joy. Isaac name means laughter, right? It means laughter, which in turn means joy. Do y'all see what God doing? Like there's some of the stuff that I'm giving revelation of while I am talking. God is so good. So here we are, Rebecca <laughs> lifting up her eyes. Rebecca, the one that was patient. Come on, you gotta be patient first. Then you gotta uh, submit. Come on. Then there's joy. Then you're gonna cleave. Come on. And then there we greater joy in Jesus name. And so Rebecca lifted up her eyes and she, she saw Isaac. She saw her joy. Come on in Jesus name. I decree and declare to all the Rebecca's you're lifting up your eyes and you're seeing your joy. Just like when the body of Christ, when, it, it, when, it, when Jesus comes back for his bride, we're going to lift up our eyes and see our joy. I feel like running. I feel like running. I'll put on some lip gloss. Right? We're going to open up our eyes and see joy. Amen. Open up our eyes and see joy. And it says, oh, that's it. And no, she lighted off of the camel. All right? She lighted off of the testimony. She lighted off of the, the, the camels also represent, um, not just testimony because of the 10, but the camels also represent, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word, Holy Ghost? Resources. Thank you. It represents resources. Yes. So the fact that she's coming in, it represents the resources. So here we have these all these different great things, right? And I'm closing here because I know this video is, is long, but I don't know about y'all. If it wasn't good for nobody else, it was good for me. Hello? Because even though I spent quiet time with God, concerning this he's given me more revelation like i said while teaching this so glory be unto god i'm just going to pray and i'm going to pray dually uh for um for us as the bride of christ 
to God, that we cleave to God, that we um, obey God, that we diligently hearken unto his voice and obey him so that the blessings of Deuteronomy 1 through 14 can fall upon us and we don't even have to experience it. Deuteronomy 15 and however it ends, like we don't have to experience the curses. I'm going to pray that, but I'm also going to pray for marriages. Amen. I'm going to pray for the Isaacs and the um, Rebecca's seeing each other. I'm going to pray for the Adams identifying his rib and knowing that it's his rib, right? And, and not being afraid to approach his rib. I, I'm going to pray for the Eads, right? To be submitted, right? And to not <laughs> go into the things of the world, but be submitted to the one that God has placed over you and to do it honorably. Amen. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you right now for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that there is none like you in all the earth. I thank you, God, that you're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I thank you, Lord, that you sit high and you look low, that you are the ancient of days, that you are royal, that you are precious, that you are perfect. And Lord, we just honor you on today. Father God, I ask, so, Lord, that you forgive us uh, and I, I, I'm coming as an intercessor, Lord, for whoever's watching this video, it's uh, us. I ask the Lord that you forgive us of all of our sins. Forgive us for pride, ill will, idolatry, unforgiveness, malice, rancor, bitterness, gossip, slander, um, strife, unbelief, doubt, for murmuring and complaining, for being judgmental, for operating in a, a Pharisee spirit and a, a Sadducee spirit and a self-righteous spirit. We ask, O oh Lord, that you have mercy on us. We come to you, O oh God, not because we're perfect, but because just as Daniel prayed, because your mercy is so great. So Lord, forgive us, have mercy on us, and renew a right spirit within us. Purge us with hyssop so that we can be made clean and renewed. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Lord, now God, I come to you with this petition and this request. I ask the Lord that you just help us, the body of Christ, help us to be one that clings to you, oh God. Help us to be one that just as your word in Deuteronomy says that Deuteronomy 1, 28, 1 says that we are one that hearken diligently to your voice, oh God. Your word says that your children, your sheep know your voice and the voice of a stranger they will not answer to. God, we decree and declare that our ears are are, are, are hearing you and you alone with clarity and with precision. We decree and declare that we will be one that obeys you and listens to you, listens to you and obeys you diligently in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that as a result of us uh, obeying you, that your promises indeed will fall upon us, that indeed we will be the body of Christ that is blessed in the city and blessed in the field, that no matter um the 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 turmoil that may hit the world that your body of Christ because we obey you we shall be safe that we can pray Psalms 991 that a thousand may fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh that only with thine eyes shall we see and behold the reward of the wicked why because we are obedient to the one that has created us we are obedient to the one that sits high we are obedient to you O God because you indeed are king of kings we decree and declare that we are blessed because of our obedience to you that we uh, that our children are blessed because of our obedience to you that our businesses and the works of our hands are blessed because we are obedient to you so lord let us be a people that hunger to go even deeper in obeying you let us allow oh god let us begin to be submerged in you let us heart let our heart be enlarged to obey you more god in jesus name in Jesus name, my friend sleeping good over here in Jesus name. Um, and let us Lord be a one that we are obeying you so much that we are overtaken by your blessings, that we are married to your blessings, that you open the treasures for us in Jesus name. Father God, we ask the oh Lord that we help us Lord to not, um, be, be, let me switch it. Sorry. Help us Lord to going for the natural, help us to find our Isaacs. Uh, let I, I decree and declare that the Isaacs and the Abrahams, no, the Isaacs and the Rebecca's in your kingdom are being joined together. I decree and declare a, a, a Genesis 2, 24 over your kingdom now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, hallelujah, I hear the Lord saying it's cleaving time. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that a leaving and a cleaving is about to hit the nation. 
of your kingdom is about to hit your kingdom. That's the nation. It's about to hit the nation in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I hear it loudly in my ear. The Lord is saying, indeed, the cleaving time is here. And I know it has been prophesied so many times, but there is indeed a heightening, a heightening that's coming concerning marriages. The Lord is saying it is cleaving time. And it, even though it is a, a natural marriages, it's not just secluded to natural marriage. There's a cleaving time coming to financial blessings. Like you're about to be married to financial blessings. You're about to, if you obey, hey, that's that's the caveat. Um, there's gonna be a cleaving to the um, just overflow in your life. There's gonna be a cleaving to the upgrade in Jesus' name. I hear the Lord even saying that the underdog are rising up, that this cleaving that God is gonna do is gonna bring the underdogs, hallelujah, to rise up. Indeed, the Lord is saying the camels are coming. It is cleaving time. The resources are coming. It is cleaving time. The testimonies are coming in Jesus' name. I hear the Lord saying, indeed, there's a cleaving time coming. And for one, when they see the camels, it'll be a testimony. But for another, when they see the camels, it's going to be the, 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 the restoration. It's going to be the, the resources. But nevertheless, for the kingdom of God, it encompasses all of that. It's the cleaving time. It's the testimony and it's the resources. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we thank you that you're bringing the Isaacs and the Rebecca's. We thank you, Lord, that we as your people are uh, being patient with your move, oh God. We're being patient. The Rebecca's are being patient with their Isaac in Jesus' name in Jesus name, in Jesus name. And we're submitting, oh God, to you. We are submitting to the things of you, oh God, in Jesus name. And there will be joy and there is a cleaving that is coming. I pray over every kingdom marriage now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the unions are coming, that the Adams are waking up and they are speaking to their Eves, that no longer would they allow insecurities to clamor their mind, but they're rising up and they're going forth and they're, they're speaking hallelujah to their e that the isaac is rising up and speaking to the rebecca and saying i know the lord has made this journey successful i know that you are the one in jesus name i feel the release hallelujah and so thank you for watching this may you have a great rest of the whatever and godspeed